From the Stroh Center in Bowling Green, Ohio, it's the home opener for Bowling Green State University men's basketball as they welcome in the Coyotes of South Dakota. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us alongside Caitlin Westhoven. I'm Brad Wozniki. The Falcons are coming off a 13-19 and 19 season, and they enter this season as one of the youngest teams in the country with six freshmen and only one senior. Yeah, and what a way to start the season. Not only starting the season with a win, but getting the win on the road. And it was all in part by being led by the redshirt freshman, Justin Turner, who led the team with 33 points and seven assists. It was definitely a quality win over Drexel and Bowling Green will need leadership this season from guys like DiMaggio Wiggins. Wiggins led the team in double doubles last season with six. He averaged better than 10 points and seven rebounds a game. Yeah, and BG is gonna be looking for him to be a dominant presence on the boards and also be a consistent scorer inside. The former Springfield Blue Devil has gotten better and better each year for the Bowling Green Falcons, who will be facing a South Dakota team tonight that comes in with plenty of experience. The Coyotes return 11 letter winners, and they also bring back three starters, including that man, Matt Moody, who led the team in scoring at better than 18 a game. And not only is he excellent on offense, but it translates to his defensive play also, with 75 steals on the air, ranking him in the top 10 in Division I. And Matt Mooney, like the rest of this team, will see their offensive role increase this season. The Coyotes will need plenty of balance if they are going to have success. It's Bowling Green and South Dakota coming your way on ESPN. We welcome you back to the Stroh Center here in Bowling Green, Ohio. The starting lineups are getting ready to be introduced as Bowling Green and South Dakota both were successful in their season openers. South Dakota defeated Mayville State by a final score of 87 to 59. The Coyotes were dominant on the glass with a 53 to 36 advantage. They shot better than 48% from the field, had eight threes and points in the paint. 46 to 16 advantage. You look at their starting lineup. Carlton Hurst, one of the seniors, followed by Tristan Simpson, who got better as a point guard for this team as last season went on. Then you have Matt Mooney, Trey Birch Manning, and Tyler Hagedorn. Hagedorn, another player whose role will increase at the offensive end this season. Now, Bowling Green, we said it, they opened up with that victory over Drexel. Rod Caldwell, Dylan Fry, Justin Turner, Derek Koch, and DiMaggio Wiggins, the Falcons' starting lineup. And that speaks right there to what you and I talked about in the open. There are four underclassmen in the starting lineup. Yeah, compared to South Dakota, BG is very young, but that doesn't mean anything because as they proved in their season opener here in Strexel, they can handle it, and they're going to come out hard, and they're going to try to prove that even though they might be young, they're powerful. Looking at last year's meeting against South Dakota, it was the first meeting all time. And South Dakota came away with the 78 to 72 victory. They had the advantage at the free throw line against the Falcons as the Coyotes were 24 of 33 from the charity stripe. Bowling Green was just 14 of 18. The percentages were good for Bowling Green, just needed to get to the line more often. And Birch Manning led the way with a double-double, 14 points, 11 rebounds. Carlton Hurst added 13 points and five rebounds. There were four Coyotes in double figures in that game and a couple players that had nine points. Yeah, and that's huge. That is a key to winning the game is having a pretty balanced scoring, but getting those high numbers. And for Bowling Green in that game, Rashid Warrell, who is no longer with the team, led the way with 14 points. Wes Alsager, who just graduated, finished with 12 points in Antoine Lillard, who will not be available for the first eight games of the season, also had 11 points in that one. And just going back to how young they are, that just proves your point going through that lineup of leading scorers from last year against this team. None of those players are going to be out on the floor today, so it's going to be a whole new set. South Dakota, it's going to be harder for them to scout and know the talent level that's going to be out on the floor, and that's going to be big an advantage for BG. Bowling Green is 88 and 14 all time in home openers. They're five and one in home openers here at the Stroh Center. 
South Dakota, the team that is picked second in the Summit League, coming off that Summit League championship last year. And who are they picked behind? South Dakota State. Hey, what a way. South Dakota is just dominating. And BG even, they're ranked fifth in the Mac East in the preseason poll, but that doesn't mean anything. As BG's volleyball team has portrayed this season, you can go from being ranked very low and come out on top. And to add to your point there, Bowling Green was picked fifth in the Mac East in volleyball. The Falcons tied for the regular season championship with the Miami Red Hawks. As you look at Bowling Green head coach Michael Huger, now in his third season as the head coach of this program, former assistant coach at Miami, and George Mason as we are underway. Bowling Green with the basketball, Caldwell will give up top. Now Wiggins has position inside, draws the double team, finds Coke on the cut, and one. And what a great, like, passing the ball, getting, looking for that open man. Derek Coke on his high school team on the roster. He was listed as a guard, a forward, and a center. Definitely a versatile player. The Falcons are excited about what he can bring to the table. Yeah, what an all-around player. Being able to play any position on the floor is essential for playing collegiate ball. Now here's Mooney. Finds his teammate on the cut. Bowling Green does a good job of closing. And now the ball is taken away. Justin Turner finds Coke with the left hand. It's good. Four nothing Falcons. And Coke already with the most points he's ever had in collegiate because last game he only had two points and what a way to start this game. One and done for the Coyotes. Back comes Dylan Fry, the sophomore. Fry was first team, excuse me, made the All-Mac freshman team last year. As DiMaggio Wiggins lost it out of bounds. Coyotes basketball. Just over a minute gone by here in the first half. Tristan Simpson with the basketball guarded by Caldwell. Now Birch Manning finds Mooney. Trying to back his way in. Now on the drive, tough shot and a blocking foul is called against Coke. That is going to send Tyler Hagedorn, the six foot 10 junior to the line. is a Coyotes team that lost 33% of its scoring from last season. And Hagedorn averaged better than five points a game over 21 games last season. Yeah, he even was out for eight games due to an injury and still came back and had a very dominant performance. Made the first. Now trying to go two for two at the line. Hagedorn had 11 points in the season opener as he knocks both down. And picking up full court there is Birch Manning. Just a little token pressure. Yeah. Caldwell finds Fry. Good look at a three. And it drops. The friendly home court bounce. Yeah, I love that home court advantage, knowing kind of how those hoops handle and that extra bounce. And Hagedorn lost it. He was a little indecisive there on that drive. Looked like he had a great opportunity to knock down a three. Yeah, BG's doing a great job of really putting the pressure, making sec South Dakota kind of second guess themselves. Falcons by five. Off the high screen from Wiggins. Caldwell, a little hesitation. Tough shot, didn't matter. Coyotes trying to push the pace. They work it around. Now Mooney pull up from the elbow. That's good. Matt Mooney. First team all league last season, leading to a preseason all league selection this year. As Turner tried to split the defense, ball on the floor, and found Wiggins for the two hand flush. Never gave up on that basketball. No, and that's the key. BG said that they wanted to come with a intensity and really push the ball and 
make his opponents kind of be feel uneasy out there. And they're doing a great job tonight. Turner gets in the paint. Try to dump it inside to Coke and good defense by Trey Birch Manning as the Coyotes will make a couple of early substitutions. Tyler Peterson will check in. And he is joined by Dan Jack, the six foot nine junior. Inbounded to Wiggins, he'll give it up to Turner. Turner only played four games last season because of injury. That shot off the iron and tipped out. As Jack got a hand on it. Here's Simpson. Now Mooney. And Mooney drawing two defenders. Corner shot no good. Offensive rebound and the putback. Immediate impact off the bench for Dan Jack. Jack missed 10 games last season due to injury. Those were league games. Yeah. South Dakota really had an issue with injuries last season with many of their player starters ended up not being able to play for parts of the season. And a foul on the floor as Caldwell was trying to take it to the basket. And another substitution for the Coyotes, this time Nick Fuller. The graduate transfer from Nebraska checks in. More on Fuller as this game goes on. Now Koch wants it in the post. He's one-on-one -on -one with Fuller. And the step back is good. That was pretty. That was. He made it look way too easy, and he looks very relaxed. Left wing. Now inside, Fuller gets a smaller Caldwell. Good ball movement, and the lay-in for Jack. That's the unselfishness we've come to expect from this South Dakota team. Yes, they're very good about balancing out their offense, trying to get everybody involved, get those shots. Fry, step back, nothing there. And a bump there gonna be called against Tyler Peterson. And that's going to take us to our first media timeout. The Bowling Green offense off to a fast start, leading the Coyotes 13-8 in the home opener here at the Stroh Center. Bowling Green 13, South Dakota 8. Just over four minutes gone by here in the first half. Brad Wozniki, Caitlin Westhoven back with you. Falcons basketball controlled by Rod Caldwell. He'll give it up to Dylan Fry. Bowling Green has brought in Daquan Plowden for his first action of the night. Now Simpson gives it up, Mooney. Mooney off the screen, off the iron, and Caldwell with good position draws the foul against Fuller. And correction, that will go against Dan Jack. Nice crowd on hand for the Bowling Green Falcons home opener. Yeah, and BG has been very successful in the past with home openers, especially in the last 25 years. They've won 24 out of 24 and only lost one. And that one loss came in the final seconds against UMKC. Yeah, 2.2 seconds left. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. Turner, the tip. Plowden and Coke really battling inside, but Bowling Green unsuccessful on that possession. Now running the floor. And a foul is called. The big man, Dan Jack, getting quickly to the other end. Both teams like to play a high intensity game and it's showing very early that they really want to get up and down the court. And there is South Dakota head coach Craig Smith in his fourth season, a record of 54 and 46 as the Coyotes head coach. 
He was the Summit League Coach of the Year last season. As the first free throw, no good for Nick Fuller. And Tyler Hagendorn returns for the Coyotes. And Nelly Cummings making his first appearance for Bowling Green. Four point game after splitting the pair. Matt Fox, the lone senior on the floor for Bowling Green with Coke, Cummings, Plowden, and Fry, and it's still in Fry for three off the iron. Good strong rebound by Peterson. Coyotes work it around. Simpson into the double team. Traveling is called. Bowling Green doing an excellent job so far of getting out on screens and drawing the Coyotes into a trap just like that. Yeah, either getting the turnovers or even getting the fouls. There's been a lot of offensive fouls by the Coyotes. Carlton Hurst has checked in for South Dakota. Hurst, the team's top defender and Coach Craig Smith believes he's the best defender in the league. He's gone on record as saying that. And no surprise, he's matched up with Dylan Fry. And what a great defensive matchup right there. Tough shot off glass for Coke. Derek Coke continues to be impressive so far in this ball game. Now trying to drop it inside off glass. The finish for Hagendorn. He now has four points. And Fry cut off on the baseline. The Falcons will have to reset. Cummings off the screen. Trying to bounce it inside to Coke. It's stolen away by Hagendorn. That's impressive to see, though. Not, you don't see too many bounce passes in college basketball anymore. Mooney for three. And tracked down by Coke on the long rebound. Approaching the 13-minute mark here in the first half. Bowling Green by four. Plowden in the paint, tied up. Great defense by Fuller. Yeah, that was very great defense. DiMaggio Wiggins will return. Derek Koch will get a hand as he goes to the bench. You have Mooney, Fuller, along with Hurst, Peterson, out on the floor there, and the oh, block is there. Block. Now Fry to the basket, and he will go to the line for two. I don't know if we can get another look at that block. The Bowling Green fans had some oohs and ahs after that one. Yeah, that was a beautiful block and a great transition offense by Fry to really get the ball and push it down court to get the foul. Dylan Fry at the line. Fry's first free throw is up and good. Dylan Fry, one of the top three point shooters in the MAC last season. Shot better than 40% from long range. Yeah, and he even became the first Falcon this millennium to score 20 plus points in at least three MAC regular season games. Fry goes two for two. It's a six point game. Three point try off the iron and rebounded by Plowden. Strong rebound. Yeah, and he had to bring it down strong because South Dakota wasn't going away. And Wiggins fighting for position inside. A foul will be called against Hagedorn. For South Dakota, that is five team fouls compared to two for Bowling Green. And Dan Jack back into the ball game. Yeah, BG's doing a great job of drawing the fouls early, trying to get South Dakota in foul trouble because 
only going from here, they're going to be shooting. Back come the Coyotes with Manning. They'll give it up to Mooney. Justin Turner to the scores table as Mooney comes up short. The tip wouldn't go, but there is Carlton Hurst. Off the high screen. Up top, and Plowden knocks it down. Daquan Plowden, two-time All-State player. He's in the top 100 at his position in the ESPN.com 2017 class. Yeah, and along with that, he was ranked the 20th best player in Pennsylvania. And he was the first one to commit to BGSU in this, fresh, in this freshman class. A blocking foul is called against Cummings. And we have reached a media timeout. Bowling Green 20, South Dakota 13. Derek Koch, the freshman, looking good early. South Dakota, great ball movement trying to stay in this one. A 20 to 13 advantage for Bowling Green over South Dakota with 11-24 remaining in this first half. And it's Coyotes basketball out of the timeout. They'll be inbounded by Manning. Off the screen. Now worked over to Armstrong. Hurst. Now Hurst from the elbow. Comes up short, offensive rebound, and the putback wouldn't go for Dan Jack. A foul is called. South Dakota on the offensive glass, causing problems for Bowling Green right now. Yeah, BG needs to do a better job of, as soon as a shot goes up, to box out and go for the rebound. Good on the first four, Jack. Dan Jack really has the opportunity to be effective offensively for this Coyotes team when he's healthy. You look at last year when he wasn't healthy, he averaged just two and a half points a game. His freshman season came out and averaged better than six a game. Yes. And Bowling Green able to break the full court press, leads to a Turner three, an air ball. Wiggins on the backside, lost it. And here comes Armstrong. Simpson looking for a driving lane. Manning in the paint, trying to go off glass. He'll go to the line for two. Trey Birch Manning started all 34 games last season. He began his career at North Idaho College where he averaged eight points and four and a half rebounds a game. And a preseason second team selection in the Summit League. Yeah, and actually, in capturing the first, uh, he was the first one to capture the first Summit Player of the Week award of the season in their win over BG last year. We've got a one possession game with 10 and a half to play here in the first half. Cummings. And a foul on the floor. That will be a one and one opportunity for Nellie Cummings. This is a great position for Bowling Green to be in right now with all, almost over half of this first half to go and they're in a shooting one-on-one -on -one opportunities and they'll be shooting the whole rest of this half. It's a great advantage. Especially when we mentioned that last year it was South Dakota that had the advantage at the charity stripe when the Coyotes shot 33 free throws compared to 18 for Bowling Green. Cummings trying to go two for two. Ellie Cummings, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette Player of the Year in 2016-2017. He averaged 29 points a game and four and a half assists a game. It's back to a five-point advantage for Bowling Green. Now Manning finds Simpson. Right back to Manning. He goes baseline and with the left hand, he's going right back to the line. 
And that's going to send Rod Caldwell and Dylan Fry to the scores table. Manning two for two on his first trip. And off the iron on the first one this time. For Manning, free throws have been a concern. He just shot 58% from the free throw line last season. Yeah, that, it, that is concerning. But it also gives him room to grow and become better. Trying to go one for two here. He does. Four-point game. Fox guarded by Armstrong. Now Wiggins up top. Plowden dumps it inside. Wiggins going to work. And one. A strong, quick move from DiMaggio Wiggins. The reaction there to the bench said it all. Yeah, and what a great matchup with Jack versus Wiggins. They're both about the same height, about the same build, and going up against each other. It's a great battle inside. And by the way, both are juniors. Hey, what can get better than that? And DiMaggio Wiggins can't complete the three-point play. Mooney trapped, trying to go baseline up top. Simpson all the way, and he will go to the line. South Dakota is doing a great job of, instead of doing the high intensity up and down the court, they've kind of slowed down the pace, set up their half court offense, and from it, they're drawing a lot of fouls from BG. Tristan Simpson, no good on the first. Simpson from Lincoln, Nebraska, played his high school ball at North Star High School. Just a sophomore, and he's 0 for 2. Coyotes have missed three of their last four freebies. Wiggins, now called well. Wiggins wants it in the post. Fox gets it back, a little pump fake. Shot clock winding down. Wiggins right into the double team. Wiggins just had nowhere to go, unfortunately. Credit South Dakota. Manning trying to find a teammate. Gets it to Simpson. He'll try a three. And off the iron, rebounded by Wiggins. Caldwell, Plowden. Wiggins double teamed, went baseline, couldn't finish. Plowden's tip no good. Inside of nine minutes to play in this first half. Mooney off the screen. And an offensive foul. Saw Dylan Fry got tripped up. And there are going to be substitutions on both sides as Coke will return for Bowling Green. And so will Nick Fuller. He will be joined by Austin Sparks, the senior making his first appearance of the night. Coyotes have gone deep into their bench so far in this ballgame. Yeah, but as a balanced team, they don't want any player to be out on the floor too long because they want to keep everybody as fresh as possible. No good for Fry. Coke battling inside. Simpson comes away with it. Pushed up ahead, Mooney. Now Mooney drops it down low. That was beautiful. Mooney gets the assist by being Nick Fuller for the easy lay-in. Caldwell finds Fry. 
Caldwell three-pointer off the iron and rebounded by Fuller. 16-12. Simpson to the basket, and he will go to the line for two when we return. Bowling Green in front, but a slim lead. 24-20, your score. DiMaggio Wiggins going to work in the post. Got the touch. remaining in the first half. Bowling Green leads South Dakota 24-20 here on ESPN. And Tristan Simpson stepping to the line. He was fouled taking it to the rack just before the break. Simpson last year was a 74% free throw shooter. He was 59 of 79. He knocks down the first. Averaged just over five points a game last season. And he's cut the lead down to two. Yeah, South Dakota is not going anywhere. That's for sure in this game. Caldwell. Gives up to Plowden. Coke wants it in the post. Caldwell. Fry. Dylan Fry has been limited so far in this game. Derek Koch has not. He's going to work. And a tough shot wouldn't go. And a foul called against Bowling Green. Give credit there to Austin Sparks, the senior, forcing a tough shot for Koch. Both teams in the bonus. And returning for Bowling Green is Nelly Cummings. And making his first appearance of the night, Jeffrey Uju. Uju last year played just two games because of injury. One of those guys that Michael Huger will look to be a spark off the bench and be physical inside. When you lose a guy like Rashid Worrell, who's very active, a lot of energy and physical, Look for guys to step up, fill that role. Of course, you've got Coke. We've mentioned him. Uju and Plowden can all be energy guys and be physical. Yeah, and that's what BG needs. Also, Wiggins would make that list also for being down low and really being a presence inside. Now, Wiggins, you expect that. Yeah, but, you know, he still has to make the list. Cummings off the screen. Now Caldwell. Caldwell, two points so far in this game. Shot clock winding down. Fry, corner three, short. Gets it back, finds Cummings. Down the lane. A runner wouldn't go. And tipped out of bounds. The referee is looking at one another. Coyotes think it's their basketball. The referee's going to get together. And it's going to be a tough call because there are a lot of people all in one area. South Dakota basketball. Even at 24, approaching the six minute mark here in the first half. Now Mooney off the screen, three pointer off the iron and Fry with the rebound. Fry in a lot of ways, especially with his shooting, mirrors former Bowling Green guard Zach Denny. And the three pointer there. Dylan Fry known for the long range game. Yes, he is gonna be their key long range shooter this season. One and done for the Coyotes. Caldwell, a little bit out of control. Coke underneath came up with a loose ball. And he will head to the line. Michael Huger, former Bowling Green basketball player from 
89-93. to He's not the only Bowling Green player that's now on the staff. Of course, Anthony Stacy, school's all-time leading scorer, also on the bench there, as you see Anthony Stacy. And Coke goes two for two. It's a five-point advantage. Here's Fuller, and Cummings with the steal. He's got Simpson in front of him, takes it all the way, blocked. The foul by Uju, no good. And here's Hurst. Simpson thought about the three. Now gets in the paint, finds Fuller. Good defense by Uju, but Fuller all the way to the basket, strong. That was a great post move by him. Back to a one possession game. Cummings finds Uju down low and he'll go to the line for two. Jeffrey Uju, the redshirt junior from Illinois. Good on the first as Manning will return along with Armstrong. Good quality minutes there from Sparks off the bench. And don't expect Tristan Simpson to be on the bench for long. No. And Uju's second is good. See Bowling Green. 10 points in the paint compared to 12 for South Dakota so far. We knew it would be a battle down low. Both teams pretty evenly matched as far as size. Three-point try off the iron. Coke the rebound. Bowling Green looking to run. It's Fry to the basket, got caught. Good look to Caldwell. Rod Caldwell no good. Coke the offensive rebound and he is fouled. Bowling Green faithful, loving the effort from the freshman. Yeah, and Coke, he's known for his rebounding. He's actually in the state of Ohio's all-time leading rebounder in high school basketball, which was a record that was set in 1973, and he just broke last year. Certainly a record to be proud of. No good there on the first. And Derek Coke averaged a double-double as a junior and a senior. His senior year, 21 points, 16 rebounds a game. And he extends the Bowling Green lead to six with just over four to play here in the first half. And we had a shot clock issue as it has been reset to 30. It was all the way down to 19 before it was reset. And Cummings going to pick up full court on Armstrong. South Dakota finished last season 22 and 12. They were 12 and four in the Summit League. Look at Bowling Green assistant coach Mike Summy. Armstrong guarded by Cummings. He'll give it up to Manning. Manning at the high post finds Mooney from the free throw line. Off balance shot and Uju can't hold on to the rebound. Armstrong will inbound it on the baseline. Mooney. Now Hurst. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. It's Mooney inside. Hurst the follow up. Second chance opportunities. And South Dakota is really taking advantage of them every chance they can. Dylan Fry was looking for his second three. Second chance thanks to Cummings. Heard some oohs and ahs on the handles there from Cummings.
Fry, guarded by Manning. Inside of 10 on the shot clock. Caldwell, thinking about the three. Tough shot, it's an air ball. Coyotes looking to get it back to a one possession game. Mooney lost the handle. Hurst inside, a layup. Two-point game. South Dakota, very patient on offense. They get a lot of quality looks. Yeah, they've been really patient and just look for those open gaps that they're creating through their offensive sets. Coke draws the double team and his pass. Knocked out of bounds. We have reached our final media timeout. A tight ball game. Bowling Green in front by two. Home opener for the Falcons and South Dakota all over the glass. Carlton Hurst with the follow. A combined 28 free throws so far in this game. Bowling Green, 9 of 12. South Dakota at 12 of 16. The Coyotes holding the advantage on points in the paint, 16 to 10. They also have four steals compared to two for the Falcons. See if Bowling Green can get this back to a two-possession game. Here's Caldwell from the elbow, and it drops. Rod Caldwell finished with nine points against the Coyotes last year. He was three of four from downtown. Now on the cut, Manning lays it in. Thought he might go up for the flush. BG going into the half really needs to pick up their defense, double team, do whatever it takes to try to slow down the scoring of South Dakota right now. Anxious to see the shooting percentages at the half, especially for South Dakota with how many layups they've gotten. Fry off the screen. Caldwell from deep. And there's Coke, offensive board. Against two defenders, no good. Uju's tip wouldn't go. It'll stay with Bowling Green. Bowling Green will line up across the baseline. Inbounded to Cummings, he'll try the corner three. Just grazes the iron, and here comes Hurst. One He's on got one. Fry in front of him. And Dylan Fry trying to pull away is still going to be whistled for the foul. He's not happy with the call. That will be his second. A lot of boos from the home crowd. South Dakota going to have a chance to tie up this game. Yeah, that was a, that was a tough foul to call because it could have really went either way. Mooney and Fox ready to check in for their respective teams. Fry and Armstrong will go to the bench. And Carlton Hurst ties up this game. See South Dakota shooting 38% from the field compared to 32% for the Falcons. Uju, looking for a teammate, finds Coke. Cummings. Fox. And Mooney called for the reach in. That will be his second personal. Matt Fox to the line. Matt Fox, the senior from Anthony Wayne High School, knocks down the first. Fox for his career, an 88% free throw shooter. It's been limited opportunities, but he is 16 of 18. 
but those 16 opportunities, those actually 18 opportunities had, he's taken advantage of them and used that to score the points that BG needs. Inside of a minute, Bowling Green by one. Hurst found Manning. Manning got away with a walk. Bowling Green basketball. Michael Huger can't believe there wasn't a call for steps. An 11 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Coke looking inside, gives it back to Fox. Caldwell, step back. No good, the tip wouldn't go. Coyotes basketball, 21 seconds remaining. And Craig Smith wants a timeout. South Dakota has trailed for most of this ball game. A tight ball game just like it was in the first meeting all time last season. Yeah, and it's going to continue, I feel like, to be a very tight game because this these teams are very evenly matched, which makes for a very eventful, exciting game, especially for BG's home opener. We talked about it in the open. A lot of experience back for South Dakota. And then the expectations for Bowling Green a little bit uncertain, depending on how their young talent develops. Six freshmen on the team. Kentucky, no surprise, has the most freshmen given the history of John Calipari and his programs. They have eight freshmen. And then American with seven freshmen. A freshman, they, they sometimes have a kind of a bad reputation to them. Like, yeah, you never know what you're going to get coming out and playing college. But, boy, BG's freshmen are showing that they can handle it. Unless you talk to Dickie V, you've got your diaper dandies as freshmen. <laughs> Here's Mooney. And time expires in this first half. Bowling Green will head to the locker room with the lead, but only a one-point advantage. 35-34 your score. Manning scoring inside, keeping the Coyotes close. Halftime here in Bowling Green. The Falcons leading the South Dakota Coyotes 35-34. Coyotes had an opportunity to go into the locker room with the lead. Bowling Green was able to get the stop. And let's look at the first half highlights now. And the Falcons got off to a quick start offensively. Derek Koch making his presence known. Yeah, what a way the freshman to start this game off on a four-point run for just him. And Koch running the floor. And Dylan Fry, three-pointer, able to go. Got the friendly bounce. Then, Rod Caldwell attacking the basket. Yeah, and then the tough intensity, and then Wiggins going up for that dunk. That was after the loose ball. Bowling Green came away with it. And inside, Coke off glass, the runner. That was a little bit of old man-style basketball with that finish from Coke. Hey, it's nice to see that once in a while. South Dakota has been strong on the glass. There was a knockdown from Daquan Plowden. Wiggins, quick move inside. Got the friendly roll. That was an and one opportunity. And what a great matchup between him and Jack today. Fry, three pointer. His only one of the, excuse me, his second of that first half. And then Carlton Hurst on the backside. Nobody home there for Bowling Green. Caldwell got the friendly bounce. Friendly bounce has really been helping everybody today. And there was the last basket of the first half with Trey Birch Manning finishing inside. Those are your first half highlights. We've got plenty more to come here at halftime with Bowling Green in front.
Welcome back to halftime. Bowling Green 35, South Dakota 34. We knew coming into this game that the freshmen were going to get opportunities, and one guy that has impressed so far for Bowling Green has been Derek Koch. In the paint, he has been strong, and right now he leads this team in scoring with 11 points, and he's also just two rebounds shy of a double-double. We've got a full half of basketball to play. And what a position to be in going into the second half. He is showing that he's strong inside, and he's going to make his presence known on both ends of the court. He's four of seven from the field, three of five from the charity stripe. Also has one assist in 15 minutes of action. Just see how comfortable he is around the basket and how well he moves out there. You can see why he was labeled as a guard, forward, and a center on his high school roster with the amount of things he can do to contribute to his team. Yeah, he's a dynamic player, and he's fun to watch because you never know where he's going to be on the court, which, hey, Coach Huyuker probably loves it because he can just throw him wherever and know he's going to do his best and probably knock down the shot. Now, South Dakota has struggled from long range, but... The unselfishness has certainly been there for the Coyotes. Their interior passing leading to easy looks like that for Dan Jack inside. Then Matt Mooney driving and finding Nick Fuller. Yeah, BG does need to do a better job of watching for those layups, watching for those cutters, communicating with each other. Because as of right now, South Dakota is just killing them on the layups. Yeah, Bowling Green has to certainly tighten up the interior. We said it. South Dakota struggled from long range. They're 0 of 6 right now. The Falcons just 3 of 12. See if the two teams can get it going from beyond the arc when we get ready for the second half. We'll be back here in a moment on ESPN. Both teams back out on the floor getting ready for the second half here on ESPN. It is the Bowling Green Falcons home opener. As we'll take a look now at the first half numbers. South Dakota out shooting Bowling Green 37% compared to 30%. Even in rebounds, Bowling Green has distributed the ball well. Three point shooting, both teams have struggled. Free throw line, both teams getting there quite a bit. Yeah. And Free throws, I feel like, are going to be the make or break for this game, especially with both teams kind of having foul trouble in the first half. It's going to be important to make those free throws going into the stretch. A couple of numbers you do not see on there. Points in the paint, South Dakota, an advantage of 18 to 10. And second chance points, 9 to 3. Bowling Green does have a slight advantage in points off turnovers, 6 to 4. Those are your first half numbers, the Bowling Green Falcons so far have led this entire game. Will that continue in the second half? We'll find out here on ESPN. The second half is underway here in Bowling Green and the Coyotes have their first lead. 36-35 your score. Brad Wozniki, Caitlin Westoven here with you on ESPN. Monday night, college hoops. Great to have the season back underway. Olin Green coming into this game looking for redemption. South Dakota won 78-72 last year in Vermillion. As the ball is stripped away from Caldwell, it will stay with the Falcons. And Caitlin, take us through the individual leaders. So the individual leaders for South Dakota, Hurst led the way with 10 points along with Jack with six points, and then Fuller with five points. And then on the other side, Bowling Green, Coke led the way with 11 points. And Fry came up with eight points, two of which were three-pointers. And then Wiggins and Caldwell shared the third spot with four points. Off the iron in the three-point try, back comes Bowling Green. Here's Turner right into a trap. Finds Caldwell. He's got Coke. Cross-court look to Fry. Dylan Fry in the paint, got it to go. Tough finish. Bowling Green back in front. Now Mooney. And no good, unable to draw iron. Turner pushes it up ahead. Fry a little pump fake. Now Wiggins, one-on-one. -on -one. 
Against Hagedorn. He finds Coke inside, who finds Fry. Three pointer. Got it. Dylan Fry, three pointer number three on the night. That was great passing by Bowling Green. They really kept their eyes looking for their players, hitting the open man and getting the best look, and Fry put it down. Fry becomes the second Bowling Green player to reach double figures tonight. And Hagedorn at the other end gets it back to a one possession game. He now has six points. Turner. Good defense there from Hagedorn. Now Wiggins. And off the hands of Koch. Just see how active the Coyotes are with their hands and getting their fingertips in the passing lanes, just knocking balls away, making it tough on Bowling Green to try and work on the interior. Yeah, they're making it tough to really let allow BG to play on the inside. They're pushing him outside, and but BG is handling the outside shots pretty well. Well off the mark. Pushed up ahead to Fry. Another three. That's number four. Dylan Fry feeling it from downtown. Hagedorn to the basket. Coke comes over for the help side. Now Caldwell. Coke to Fry. And a foul against Mooney. That will be his third personal. Bowling Green fans applauding. And checking in will be Tyler Peterson, the sophomore. Worked over to Coke on the wing. He'll put it on the floor, now finds Caldwell. Baseline jumper off the iron, rebounded by Peterson. And Caldwell a near steal. Manning comes up with it. Now Simpson. Back to Manning. Inside block from behind. Up ahead to Fry. Thought about the three. Now Wiggins double teamed. Coke. And Manning will be whistled for the foul. That will be his second personal. Great ball movement from the Falcons. Yeah, and then that was a great, it was good to show that Coke that he felt that he could go and put the ball on the floor and go for that drive. Because a lot of forwards, they get nervous when they're driving from all the way out at the arc. Fry one more time, this time it's off the iron. Simpson, Bowling Green able to get back on defense. Simpson, and that was a slick pass to Manning over his shoulder. One possession game again. Up top to Coke. He'll work it over to Turner. Turner has been quiet tonight, scoreless after 33 points in the season opener. Wiggins up top, Caldwell. Time winding down. Turner. And Coke got the shot off. And DiMaggio Wiggins over the back. That will be his third personal. And we have our first media timeout of the second half. A one possession ball game. And Dylan Fry continuing to make plays. Saw the inside basket. And there's one of his four three pointers. Dylan Fry has now tied his career high for three-point makes in a game with four. It's the fourth time he's connected on four triples in his career. He's up to 16 points to lead all scores. So, that, and that's a good feeling as a player. Already just in their second game, hitting the most three-pointers you've ever done in college. And also 
putting up 16 points for your team. Showing the confidence here at home. Here's Simpson. And again, he's only a sophomore. He has plenty of time to keep getting better. And Simpson, three-pointer. And we are tied. Just the second field goal. Pardon me, that was the first field goal for Simpson. It's also two of four at the charity stripe. Caldwell gives it off to Fry. Now baseline coming up short. It's out to Plowden. Turner. Baseline, short. And a good box out by Hagedorn, and he's able to save it. Worked over to Hurst. And inside, Plowden got in the way of Hagedorn. And a Bowling Green foul. BG has done a better job this half so far of stopping the easy layups and really communicating on the floor to push the South Dakota outside. And that will be team foul number three for the Falcons. And Derek Koch back on the floor. Plowden will check out. We've also got Joniah Gadsen on the floor for the first time tonight. Did not see any action in the first half. And at the other end, that's Turner in one opportunity, his first basket of the night. Dylan Fry able to push it ahead and then the crossover to get by Simpson. A little contact, counted and a foul. And that's what BG needs. They need to push the ball down the court and really drive in, make South Dakota foul them. Turner completes the three point play. And Dan Jack will return. Cummings picking up full court. Now Simpson gives it up. Manning corner three. Off the iron, tipped around, and Hurst between three Bowling Green players gets the offensive board. And South Dakota unable to take advantage on the three try. And Cummings a little hesitation, foul on the floor. Manning trying to signal that Cummings got away with the off arm. Nick Fuller will return. Manning just picked up his third. One possession game, approaching the 13 minute mark. Fry. A foul committed. Just like the first half, the foul starting to pile up. A combined 32 free throws in the first half. And that's what BG needs. And then they also need to take advantage of those shots. And underneath battling was Gadsden. That's the second chances that Bowling Green needs to be there for. South Dakota held that advantage in the first half. And going aggressive, going up aggressive on those offensive rebounds are important because obviously South Dakota is, has the possibility of fouling you, which means it only moves your foul total up faster. Cummings against Fuller wouldn't drop. Up ahead to Fuller. Got Fry in front of him. Wild shot. Nick Fuller went down hard. He will go to the line for two. Fuller, 
We mentioned earlier Nick Fuller with a connection to head coach Craig Smith. Craig Smith, former assistant at Nebraska, and Fuller, a graduate transfer from Nebraska. Fuller was in his redshirt season when Smith was an assistant. They've also worked together quite a bit. And that player-coach relationship is really important, especially for the development of the player. And also, it gives the player somebody to look up to, especially with that close of a relationship. It's another player, too, for the young guys out there with Fuller knowing Coach Smith a little bit that he can kind of relay some of the information of the younger guys that Coach Smith is looking for and bring this team and experience up a notch. Yeah, and that's always important for any team. Fox on the wing. Three-point try for Turner. Well short. He's able to save it to Gatson. Turner, corner three. This time it's good. Turner now up to six points all in the second half. And a foul at the other end. He's really starting to get the hot hand for BG. All it takes is just to see that first one go down and that's what happened for Turner on an and one opportunity. Yeah, it's always a confidence booster for any player. And the shot is good. Tyler Peterson with his first field goal. Also, South Dakota starting to get their outside game going for him. 0 of 6 in the first half from beyond the arc. Turner, Fox. Trying to dump it inside of Gatson. He was in a crowd. Now Hurst at the other end. Layup is good. We've got a one-point game. DiMaggio Wiggins ready to return. Cummings open look. Short and Coke. Offensive board draws the foul. Media timeout. 11-17 remaining in this ball game. Bowling Green 49, South Dakota 48. Janiah Gadsden had it stripped. Coyotes going the other way. It's Mooney to Hurst for the layup. A one point game with a little over 11 minutes remaining in this ball game. Derek Koch stepping to the line after an offensive rebound. Bowling Green is in the bonus for the rest of this one and no good on the front end. Simpson across midcourt. Hagedorn for three. An air ball and Fuller trying to save it. Fox comes up with it. Turner the lob. Coke the finish. That was a great play by Bowling Green. Still a one possession game. It'll stay with the Coyotes. Manning will return Fuller to the bench. Hagedorn gives it up. Just over 10 on the shot clock. Hagedorn, one on one. Goes right at Wiggins. Help came. Three pointer. Peterson, no. And good box out by Koch. Going back to defensive basics. 
Shot up, box out, go up and get the rebound strong. And it's right back to the bench for Trey Birch Manning. Just picked up his fourth. Coke at the line, missed his last free throw. Another one and one opportunity and gets the friendly roll. He's now up to 14 points. Two for two. South Dakota still a slight advantage on the glass. Carlton Hurst to the scores table. Mooney up top for three, that's good. Mooney now up to seven points. I'm sure he's glad just to see one go down. A lot of off-balance shots in the first half. As Mooney was just two of 12. And that's tough, because he's not used to having that kind of rough start to a game. Turner off the iron. And a foul going to be called, I believe, against Bowling Green. And it is. Bowling Green now up to 16 fouls. South Dakota with eight. We're just past the halfway point of this second half. And returning for Bowling Green is Daquan Plowden. Plowden, the freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Simpson finds Mooney. Well defended by Turner. And a little bit of contact there. That will be number three on Justin Turner. As Dylan Fry checks in for Matt Fox. And Carlton Hurst quickly to the scores table. Peterson will go to the bench. Chance for Mooney to tie up this game. No good. Turner, and he traveled. BG right now kind of just looks out like they're out of synchronization right now, and they really need to come back together and regroup going into this final stretch. Mooney lost it. Inside, Hagedorn, a little hesitation, and one. Tyler Hagedorn can put the Coyotes in front with the free throw here. What a mismatch right there, though. Hagedorn and Fry going head-to-head. -head. Hagedorn last year was 25 of 33 from the free throw line as Matt Fox will once again come back in for Fry. Dylan Fry in foul trouble. Coyotes by one. Cummings off the screen from Wiggins. Trying to get to the basket, and it goes. That was not an easy shot. There was two big guys down low and a little bit of contact down there. And Mooney, the reverse, went right by the defense. Matt Mooney might try and take over this game. Cummings, step back from the elbow, good. But right along with Mooney is Cummings. They're both putting up a show right now. Nelly Cummings tried to poke it away from behind. Hagedorn three, good. The Coyotes have found the range here in the second half. Cummings 
A loose ball. And Turner's going to come away with it. Plowden was diving there along with Fuller. And Wiggins unable to grab that one inside. Good defense from the Coyotes. Fuller at the other end and one. Nick Fuller fired up after that one. Media timeout. The Coyotes with their largest lead and they'll have a chance to add to it when we return. 61-57 your score. One more time. The Coyotes running the floor. Simpson to Fuller and one. The Bowling Green Band in the stands, providing a lot of noise for this one. It's South Dakota right now making some noise though here on the road. With a 61 to 57 advantage, the Coyotes did not lead at all in the first half, but they went into the locker room trailing by just one. They started to find the range in the second half and they continued to attack the basket. Yeah, there's really been a momentum swing towards South Dakota in the second half. And Nick Fuller completes the three-point play. He now has eight points. See what adjustments Bowling Green makes out of the timeout. Wiggins draws the double team, finds the cutting, Plowden. And that was a goaltend. One possession game, here it is one more time. And the goaltend there from Hurst. Now can the Falcons come up with a stop? Up top, Hagedorn, another three, you bet. He is now up to 15. Coyotes were 8 of 24 from long range in their season opener against Mayville State. Wiggins, tough shot, did not draw iron. Mooney, Hagedorn. The bench thought he was going to let it fly. As Hurst is blocked by Wiggins, then stripped by Caldwell. A South Dakota foul, that will be number 9. Each team now with 9 team fouls. Now it's up to BG to take advantage of those free throw opportunities because that could be what makes or breaks them to stay in the game. Dylan Fry back on along with Derek Koch. So you've got Fry, Caldwell, Turner, Plowden, and Koch. For the Coyotes, it's Hurst, Hagedorn, Fuller, Mooney, and Simpson. And currently, South Dakota is leading in the field goal attempts, shooting 44% compared to BG's 35%. Able to break the press. Simpson got to the basket, couldn't finish. Loose ball, Simpson has it. Now Mooney. Cut off on the drive. Time winding down, Mooney for three. Yes, sir. Matt Mooney now into double figures. Turner right into traffic. The runner no good. Up ahead, Fuller. Bounce pass to Mooney. Baseline jumper, Matt Mooney. Timeout, Bowling Green. Mooney now up to 14 points. 10 so far in this second half. And South Dakota now with a nine point advantage. Yeah, and it's, it's tough. They really have the upper hand right now. But with this timeout by Coach Huger, hopefully he'll be able to instill, get some 
show it right up a play, try to get this momentum back in their favor. South Dakota looking to start the season 2-0. We mentioned just how well the Coyotes share the basketball and has certainly carried forth in this second half. As you look at some of the fans in attendance for this one. Bowling Green has been dominant here at home in home openers. Five and one at the Stro, 88 and 14 all time. But South Dakota trying to move to two and zero all time in this series against the Falcons. And that's the confidence booster that both teams want. They want to be two and zero going in to their next games. And South Dakota's playing isn't going to get much better with their next game coming up of this week being in TCU. They're actually playing three games in these past five days. So it's a tough schedule for them. At TCU coming up this Wednesday, followed up by Grambling State on the 18th. And then Mount Marty. That game against Mount Marty, part of the Sanford Pentagon Showcase. And for Bowling Green, Next up, they will take on Florida Gulf Coast. That game can be seen right here on ESPN3. Followed up on November 20th against Lake Erie College. Then USC Upstate on November 24th. Then on the road at Campbell. So the next three games for Bowling Green all here at home. And that's where you got to take care of business. Yeah, BG really needs to defend their home court. Last year, they kind of struggled with, you know, protecting their house. And this year, they really need to step up and get the job done. Both teams back out on the floor. South Dakota 70, Bowling Green 61. And Rod Caldwell will bring it up the floor. He has six points in tonight's ball game. You've got Fry and Coke out there, the two team leaders. They've combined for 31. Fry, tough shot on the baseline. It's an air ball. Coke underneath trying to clean it up. Turner came in there and he couldn't finish. Look for South Dakota to be patient on their possessions now, try and take some time off the clock. Yeah, they're going to go nice and slow, set up their offensive schemes, really see what's working. And you never know. You, they might go back to what they were doing in the first half of driving and getting the layups, penetrating. Mooney a little indecisive there. It's a turnover. Turner the other way, splits the defense, is blocked by Hagedorn. Back come the Coyotes. Three on one, Mooney, layup, and a double-digit lead. Fry at the other end, draws some contact, and... That will put Bowling Green in the double bonus. Here's one more look. Simpson, a no look to Matt Mooney. That looks like a team that brought back 11 letter winners. Yeah, they're playing like they, with experience. And Dylan Fry makes it a 10-point game. Tyler Peterson checks in for Carlton Hurst. Hurst will go to the bench with 12 points. But with all this experience, it's a good exposure, especially in just the second game in the season for BG to kind of see so this is what they're going to face most of the season, being such a young team. Dylan Fry now up to 18 points. Hagedorn finds Simpson. Not going to rush on this possession. We're inside of five to play. Mooney, the crossover, is kicked out of bounds by Turner. Bowling Green faithful doesn't agree. Turner had no argument there. 
But BG, they're because they're seeing how slow South Dakota's going, so they're really going to try to keep the pressure tough on them, trying to make them turn the ball over and make mistakes instead of fouling because they know if they foul, they're going to the line. Simpson inside the arc, it's off the iron, clouding the rebound. Fry right by Peterson, dumps it inside and Coke is blocked. Plowden to the basket and one. What a great drive, drive to the basket by Plowden. He was living up to his last name. He really plowed through. Well said. Daquan Plowden now up to seven points. Trying to complete the three point play and make this a two possession game. And Plowden no good. Coyotes by seven. Simpson avoids the trap. Now the lob inside, Fuller, tough shot. Coke battling for the rebound, comes away with it. That was a great job by Coke to bring it down, start pivoting, look for his open man. Now Fry gets in the paint, trying to find Plowden. Mooney into the hands of Coke and he lost it out of bounds. And Manning checks in for the Coyotes with the four personal fouls. Coach Huger is really showing his confidence he has in his young forwards, leaving them in in these last few minutes. Fry for three. That's number five. A new career high in three-pointers made for Dylan Fry. And it couldn't come at a better time for BG. And at the other end, Peterson will go to the line, but not before this media timeout. South Dakota led by 11. Bowling Green has cut it down to four. 344 remaining. Again, a great passing from the Coyotes. Matt Mooney making his presence known in this second half. How about the triple try knocking it down? Back inside the Stroh Center in a 72 to 68 ball game. Peterson at the line trying to get it back to a six point advantage for the Coyotes. Tyler Peterson now up to four points. And two for two. And now a defense, pardon me, an offense to defense substitution for the Coyotes as Hurst is back in and Manning to the bench. Caldwell. Trying to get to the basket, and he was fouled. He had to earn that one. Yeah, they they were not going to give him that any any easy, very easy. Rod Caldwell, in his freshman season, shot 70% from the line. He was 50 of 71, and he's good on the first. And those are the type of the players going down this last three and a half minutes that you want at the line. They're consistent, and you can almost rely on them to make these shots for your team. Caldwell, two for two. Coyotes by four. Full court pressure. Inbounded to Mooney. He's able to get out of the trap. Simpson guarded by Turner. Defense! 
Behind the back. Simpson to the basket. Tough finish. Bowling Green wanted a walk. See if the Falcons can respond. Here's Plowden on the wing. Try to bounce it inside to Fry, and it's stolen away by Hurst. That was a tough pass to try to make. Carlton Hurst was second on the team in blocks, rebounds, and steals last season. No surprise, he came up with that last play, reading that pass beautifully as Bowling Green trying to fit it into a tight window. Mooney, three, huge. That might be a dagger. Yeah, Mooney really has come alive this second half. And Caldwell, foul on the floor, will still be two free throws. Bowling Green's going to have to work their way back into this game from the charity stripe without any time coming off the clock. But two minutes is like an eternity in college basketball. And Mooney with his 19 points has just picked up his fourth personal. And good on the first. Matt Fox checks in for Daquan Plowden. Cummings also into the game. Two for two. And Mooney going to take this one himself. Now pushes it up ahead. Dangerous pass. Double team comes, finds Simpson. Inside of two to play. Mooney, deep three, another. Matt Mooney, 18 points in the second half. And South Dakota in front by 10, forcing Bowling Green into a timeout with 1.49 to play. Matt Mooney taking over this ball game in the second half, and we'll look at some of his highlights. Little hesitation there, knocked it down. It's the guy that made 76 threes last season, also showing his ability to distribute. Getting the basket, just creating opportunities for his teammates. And here, baseline, why not? Yeah, he's really put the this team on his shoulders and has carried them this second half. Another assist finding Hurst in transition. Matt Mooney, first team, all Summit League. Fry to the basket, got it to go. Back to a single digit ball game. Still a lot of work to do for Bowling Green. And Mooney, a foul against Caldwell. Just his first personal. Mooney did not attempt a free throw in the season opener, but he shot 71% last season. A man that started his career at Air Force. Played in 29 games at Air Force, started eight of those and averaged 6.9 points a game. And one for two. Stays a single digit lead. Turner at the other end, steps by the defender and misses the layup. Less than 90 seconds to play. Another Bowling Green foul. Simpson to the line. Seven points on the night for Tristan Simpson. Rattles out on the first. 
couple of misses here for South Dakota. You go back to that layup missed by Turner and how much it hurts down the stretch here. It hurts for BG. They really, all, every shot, they're feeling like they need it to go in. 0 for 2. Fry had it stripped it going the other way. Fox from deep. And Matt Fox, his first field goal. Couldn't have come at a better time. Six-point game, 113 remaining. It'll be a 30-second timeout. And that's what BG needed going into the timeout. You, you just need that momentum, and now they are able to go into the huddle, draw up some plays, and hopefully keep the momentum shifting towards them. Matt Mooney, just look at his three-point shooting. Bowling Green has done the job as well from long range in this one, especially Dylan Fry with five threes in this one. Matt Fox knocking down a big three there. Falcons come out with Fry, Turner, Cummings, Caldwell, and Fox. It's Peterson to inbound for the Coyotes. They'll find Mooney. Yeah, that pass out of bounds. What a great defense by the BG. Yeah, and Mooney and Hurst just not on the same page there. Great opportunity for the Falcons. Caldwell, kick out. Cummings inside left hand drops four point game less than a minute to play now Mooney and nearly a steal last touch by the Falcons Coyotes getting a little bit careless here yeah in the, from what we saw their passes aren't typically this far off Peterson to inbound. And a timeout. That will leave the Coyotes with just one timeout remaining. Bowling Green with only one timeout as well. Another 30-second timeout. And that's a good sign for Bowling Green. That means that the pressure was on. They were playing such strong defense and felt so pressured that they had to call a timeout because they didn't feel like they could get the ball in bounds quick enough. Michael Huger coming into this game, looking to pick up win number 31 in his career here at Bowling Green. He would move to 31 and 37. And the Falcons would move to two and one in home openers under Coach Huger. As you look at Dylan Fry attacking the basket. Then Nelly Cummings, still not sure how he got that one to go. A little bit of English with that one. As you see the big men for the Falcons. Peterson. And a five second violation. That was great defense that BG really needed this entire game, but they've really turned it on this last minute. Four-point game, 52 seconds left. Fox to inbound. The Falcon faithful really getting into it, standing up, clapping, yelling. It's a great feeling and atmosphere here in the Stro. It was a tough shot there for Fry. And Turner thought he had a steal. The entire Bowling Green bench, I think the entire arena, thought Turner had a steal. Instead, it'll be free throws for South Dakota. And that's a tough call in this last minute. That reaction there from Ethan Good said it all. Yeah. It looks like he still has some hair on his head after that. Here it is again. Mooney split the defenders. Turner looked like he got a clean swipe there. And Daquan Plowden checks in for Turner.
I believe for Turner that was his fifth personal, so he is done for the night with six points. One more free throw here for Mooney, and it'll be a six-point advantage. Two for two. Caldwell with time winding down on the Falcons. It's Fry for three. Off the iron, plowed on the backside. And it's Mooney coming away with it. He'll put it up ahead to Hurst. And Carlton Hurst puts the exclamation point on this one for the Coyotes. Caldwell three. Off the iron. Into the hands of Manning. 21 seconds remaining. And South Dakota on their way to a 2-0 start on the 2017-2018 season. BG, though, has shown the growth that they have come from last season to this season already, and they've played them very tough. Manning to the line. He's got seven points tonight. The three-point arc really has helped South Dakota in the second half to pull out the lead. That spark has just set all the points. Hagedorn knocking down threes. Mooney knocking them down. Two of the guys we expected to lead the way for South Dakota. As Manning goes 0 for 2. Still an eight-point advantage. Plowden three. Off the iron. Mooney another rebound. Matt Mooney might be close to a double-double. 12 seconds remaining. You have to give credit to the South Dakota team and the way they battled, especially in the first half. The shots weren't going down. They were especially struggling from long range at 0 of 6 in the first 20 minutes of play, but only went into halftime trailing by one. Played team basketball the entire way. Yeah, they did a great job of realizing what wasn't working for them and making the necessary changes to stay in this ball game. And unfortunately, BG just wasn't able to adapt. South Dakota comes away with the 88 to 79 victory on the road. Handing Bowling Green their first loss of the season. Matt Mooney, the outlet to Carlton Hurst for the exclamation point with the dunk. We'll be back here on ESPN. Hey. Welcome back to Bowling Green, Ohio, where the South Dakota Coyotes move to 2-0 on the young season with an 88-79 victory. This was just the second meeting all time between these two schools and an all-around team effort tonight from the Coyotes. Yeah, they really were balanced. They got the ball. They did great passing, distributing, making those layups, and getting the points and adapting the, in the first half, seeing that they weren't doing so well from behind the arc and moving it inside and then came alive the second half. And with that, let's take a look at the highlights from this game as both teams really attacked the basket inside Going off glass there was Manning. And Dylan Fry, a big night, finishing with 23 points to lead the way for the Falcons. He finished with five threes, the most threes he has made in a game in his career. He finishes just one point shy of tying his career high of 24 points that came against the Ohio Bobcats. Another look at one of his threes there. Simpson, a three-pointer. The Coyotes were hot from long range in the second half. Yeah, you couldn't stop them, especially Mooney and Haddingard. They just came alive. Justin Turner started to find the range in the second half. He was scoreless in that first half, and a little bit of a quiet night for Justin Turner coming off that 33-point performance. Yeah, it's tough going from 33 points to six, but, you know, South Dakota knew. They were the, he was the boy to guard and go after, so... You know, it's not surprising. Carlton Hurst, you look at that finish in transition. 
Derek Koch with the finish there. The freshman, Derek Koch, was impressive in the first half. Didn't hear much from him, at least scoring in the second half. No, but he was still big on the boards. He he was a presence, and I have to say, we don't have the final stats in front of us right now, but I'm pretty sure he had a double-double for the day. And Cummings knocking down a shot there. And Matt Mooney finishing with that reverse layup. We'll take a look now at the final numbers from this one. As South Dakota shoots 47% from the field, Bowling Green at 34%. The Falcons did have a slight advantage on the glass. You see how well the Coyotes shared the basketball. They had 17 of those 21 assists in the second half. They shoot 40% from long range as they were 8 of 20. So you 8 of 20 for the game. They were 8 of 14 in the second half. Yeah, which is astounding considering how, like, they just did not perform in the first half. Bowling Green finished 8 of 25 from long range, and we'll go through the individual numbers now. First for South Dakota, Matt Mooney, 26 points on 9 of 21 shooting. He was one of three players in double figures as Tyler Hagedorn finished with 15 points and four rebounds, and Carlton Hurst just misses a double-double with 14 points and nine rebounds. For Bowling Green tonight, Dylan Fry, 23 points, 7 rebounds. He was 5 of 10 from long range and 4 of 4 from the charity stripe. For Derek Koch, 15 points, 14 rebounds, a double-double for the freshman in his debut in the home opener. And what a way to show your home proud. This is who I am, and you have me for four more year, three more years. And Rod Caldwell, 10 points tonight. Most of his points coming from the free throw line where he was 6 of 6. DiMaggio Wiggins tonight, a tough one. Finishes with just four points on two of four shooting. He wasn't involved too often in this one. He played just 19 minutes. So with those numbers, Caitlin, your final thoughts on what we saw here tonight. It was a great game. You know, BG didn't get the results they wanted, but it happens. And they can only continue to grow, get better. They're young. They have so much opportunity ahead. And Bowling Green will continue their home schedule. They will now get ready for Florida Gulf Coast coming up this weekend right here at the Stroh Center. So a chance for the Falcons to bounce back. Meanwhile, South Dakota will get ready for another road game as they will take on TCU. The Coyotes now 2-0 this season. They're now 2-0 all time against Bowling Green. That's going to do it for this broadcast. Once again, an 88-79 victory tonight for South Dakota over Bowling Green. For Caitlin Westhoven, our producer Joe Goodman, I'm Brad Wozniki saying so long from the Stroh Center. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.